Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today I get the opportunity to work on one of my favorite reels of all time. This is the Daiwa Sea Line 50H. This one is in beautiful condition. It was sent in by Alfred, and uh, it tells me that the uh, reel needs some service, and I'm noticing that even with the drag tightened all the way down, we don't have much of a drag. So I'm thinking we're probably going to be replacing drag washers or we'll find something in there that's jamming the channel. So we're going to start uh, to show you how to take this apart completely, how to service it, how to put it back together again, and how to get it out there fishing. So uh, as I mentioned, it's one of my favorite ones. And one of the things that I favor is thanking our first responders and essential personnel for everything it is that they're doing during the pandemic. My gosh, we just heard of another variant now, Omicron. And uh, hopefully uh, this one will be tamed. But in the meantime, thank you to all of our uniform services, all of the police, fire, rescue, EMT, and everybody who's putting their lives on the line to help stem the uh, advance of this uh, virus and to help get those who've contracted it uh, back to health. Really is appreciated. Thank you very much. Now you notice that I took the, the set screw and the handle screw off. That handle screw, the wrench for a pen wheel will work on that nut. So, or screw. And then I'm putting them all into a plastic container. It's the bottom of a milk jug and it holds all my pieces and parts that I take off. It's always a good idea if you don't know the reel to go out and get a schematic on the uh, internet that's uh, widely available. And uh, if you uh, are kind of midway through this or you can't find the schematic or both, take pictures. Those pictures along the way will help uh, to identify the order and sequence and the pieces and the parts. All right, one of the tests for a drag washer when you take all the pieces off is where is the ferrule in relation to the side plate? And this one's very low. So that's telling me the drag washers are probably worn. You can see I can just barely get a, um, a, a, a tip of a screwdriver to fill that gap. And when that's compressed with the star adjuster, that's going down quite a bit. So uh, we're going to check those drag washers out and possibly replace them. This case is held on by three side plate screws, so we're going to go ahead and take those out. And this reel is in very good condition. It doesn't show any, uh, any salt water corrosion or the like. It still has clear reading on the label on the inside of the spool. You can still read the decals. Very nice uh, reel overall. All we'll need on that one is a little bit of uh, rod and reel cleaner. And that'll just take off whatever dust or, or kind of uh, uh, polish fade or the like is on here. And uh, we'll do that in a little bit. All right. I, uh, these have those finger screws. They're like the Abu type screws. Once you, you loosen that, you can generally walk it off with your finger because of the ridges on the side of it. And then just pull them back. You don't have to pull these all the way through the case. As soon as you feel that case move out, just kind of pull it back off. And this is the inside look at the 50H. 50H has got two ball bearings. It's got one on each side of the, the reel. It casts like a, like a joy. Very nice. Very smooth reel. And I'm just uh, cleaning up the debris. A little bit of dried grease on there. We'll go ahead and oil that bearing that's on the side plate. And that's all you really need to do. I'm using a fishing reel oil for this. Please, when you Go to re-lube your reels. Use fishing reel products. Use a fishing reel grease and a fishing reel oil. doesn't matter who the manufacturer is, but it does matter that it is fishing reel oil. I'm going to use that rod and reel cleaner now. This one's a pen rod and reel cleaner. It's available widely online. Um, I'm saying that because I like it, not because I get paid to do that. And uh, we're just going to use it. It's a two things. It will clean up any things like fish scales and the like on the reel. It will clear up any kind of haze that might be on there. And it's also going to polish. So a very nice product overall. And uh, put it on, I put it on with just a corner of a kitchen scrubby. That way if you need a little bit of abrasion to uh, knock free some of that stuff, it will do that for you. And it's always easier to clean a reel like this when you have the spool out as opposed to trying to do it around the spool. All right, that side of the case is complete. I'll do the same thing here on that spool. This is an anodized aluminum spool, uh, so it's lightweight. It casts nicely, and uh, it stands up to uh, salt water um, 
mini salts, micro sands, and the like. Right. We could put a little bit of, of grease onto the stud on the spool. It looks like there's some that was on there already. That's probably what was dried. And that'll just help it ride a little bit easier inside the bearing. For the grease, I'm using um, a Pen Precision Real Grease. I use the Pen Precision Real Oils and others. But again, use the fishing reel oils and the fishing reel greases. So if you like viewing channels like this, I'd ask you to subscribe to mine, Second Chance Tackle, and uh, that will give you the opportunity to see the, the various reels that I work on. I work on all kinds of reels, and I'll show you how to service them, how to take them apart, how those are made, and uh, how to put them back together again at the end of the exercise. Three of these screws come right through the bridge. One has a set screw. The one with the set screw is holding the anti-reverse dog. I'm going to take that anti-reverse dog spring off first before I do anything because I don't want that shooting anywhere. Simply just disconnect it from the, the notch side of the dog. You can let it hang there or if you get a little nervous you can just kind of take it out put it in the parts tray. Let's go ahead and try and take the bottom one off. Sometimes that uh, that nut on the bottom is locked in pretty good, as it seems to be the case here, and uh, just takes a little bit of doing. If you find yourself in trouble, stop like I'm going to do here and go get a, uh, a nut driver. Or okay, so I took a moment. I went and got a nut driver with the appropriate uh, socket, and now we're going to loosen this screw before we go and take it out on the other side. Don't force anything particularly with old reels. If you try to force things, you're going to get in trouble. And if you break something, it's going to be very difficult to find replacement parts. So you can still get parts for the 50H, but in very limited supply as opposed to, say, a pen reel, uh, which is, is better supported. But if this is a case with drag washers, well, I have the drag washers to replace them, and uh, I'll probably go ahead and go do so. There's four bridge screws with that spring removed. We really don't have to worry about any parts that are going to shoot out right now. So we'll just go ahead and back all of these off. As a practice, I cup my hand around the side plate when I'm removing bridge screws. That way, if there is a loose piece or part, it's going to fall into my hand and not shoot across my bench. So we got one more of these. This uh, screw can be taken out with a flat bladed screwdriver or it can be taken out with a Phillips head. Just uh, pushing all of it through. You know you're detached when you can push and raise. That's what we'll do right now. And here's your inside look at the 50H. Notice I, I put the screws onto my table, and all four screws are the same, so it doesn't matter what position you put those back in. I'm going to put those into the box right now. Here's the dog that we were talking about, and you can, you know which side is the dog because the, the notch goes to the outside of the case and faces down. If you didn't remember that, take a picture. It'll tell you that. We have two yoke springs. I'm going to get rid of those in a hurry just because they tend to shoot. So those go into my parts tray. And when I organize my parts tray, I put the pieces in different sections of the tray. I just don't have to absolutely, um, put them in there because it generally uh, mixes them all up. And if you can keep them segregated, well, that's probably a better deal all around. All right, I'm going to lay the bridge off to the side for a moment. We have an accumulation of uh, dried grease on the yoke on both sides. That's going to slow down the performance. It's going to slow down the uh, how the pinion gear turns. So we want to get that off. So I'm going to start first by kind of wiping it down with a paper towel. If you can't get it off with that, we'll just move up the uh, uh, the abrasion side and also add something. So. A penetrating oil, for example, is a good way to degrease. It's a cleaner in addition to a light lubricant. I don't use it as a lubricant, I use it as a cleaner. But that'll help. Now, if you found that uh, it was really burdensome, you could switch over to a piece of steel wool. This is a, a 4 0, it's the finest steel wool. It's really a polisher rather than a uh, an abrasive. But don't go any more grittier than the 4 0 steel wool. All right, that's cleaned. We're going to put that back into the tray. I'm going to inspect the pinion gear. I want to make sure that all of the teeth are correct and that they're all uh, uh, aligned in the same orientation, that there's no chips or cracks or anything unusual about them that would say that it's going to be bad for performance. 
when I tested the reel, I didn't feel anything that said that there was a skip or a grind or an odd noise. So uh, this is kind of to show you, but um, but that one seems to be in good condition. I've uh, pretty much got rid of the racers and oils now, just do a light flush with that penetrating oil. And we'll put that into the tray as well. Okay, here is your main gear assembly. We're thinking that the drag washers may be worn. We're going to see. So we'll pull the ferrule or the sleeve. And we have, we should have a kind of a tension washer here. Sometimes these will get pressed down to the point where you do need to uh, kind of help them along. That shouldn't have been stuck there, but it was. And then if you find that you're getting a little wobble, just take a uh, little pliers to assist in pulling it off. And then we have a nice, beautiful main gear on this one. Sometimes you're not going to be able to get that main gear out again, so just press through and remove these in layers. Again, this one's the one that's sticking, that's why you can get that main gear off. Use your pliers again, rather gently, and then we'll be able to get that last one off. So these have a, um, um, a disc system that's kind of a composite. It's almost like a brake pad. And uh, we're going to compare those to new, and we'll see if uh, if it makes sense to replace those. All right, one more thing you want to do when you do your service is to remove this gear sleeve so that you can service underneath. The gear sleeve has a pin. It's right here, and you need to push that pin through like that. You can see how it comes through. I just use a um, little dollar store punch all for that, and you should be able to pull that up. If you can't, then the pin isn't up enough don't lose the pin on the way out and then you should be able to separate this and this one's getting a little stuck here so I'm just going to help it out with the turning the, the base as a uh, with the screwdriver and you can see the old grease in here what a lot of folks do unfortunately is they skip this step when they do a rebuild I, sometimes I wonder if they even know that that step exists uh, but you can see we've got dried grease here, we've got dried grease where the oil would circulate here, and that's slowing the reel down. So you want to remove all of that so that it turns smoothly. And then you can see how it's accumulated on the base. So again, we'll use the WD-40. Just to kind of let that soak for a minute. And then because we have it on the base here, and I can assume that we have some on the inside because it was all uh, greased up. So I'm going to flood the inside of this with some WD-42. And kind of continue on. Now I'm going to use that because that was a little sticky over here. So I'll use that um, steel wall here to just kind of help in the degreasing. So if you have any questions on fishing reels, if you, uh, if you want to know more about them, maybe you've got a problem, maybe you've taken a, a reel apart and I uh, can't seem to figure out where the pieces go again or how a particular part operates, well, if you leave that in the uh, comment section, I'll try and help you with it if I know the answers. And uh, if I don't, uh, well, I'll try and point you to somebody who may have the answers. I just learned the other day how to measure rod tips for replacement rod tips that's not my my passion and it's not something i do all the time but i'm helping out a boat captain and uh he had asked all right i'm going to grab a container with some diary parts in it we're going to take a look at the dry washers versus the new replacement washers i think that they're going to need them and uh, we'll take a look and see Just so happens it's in, in, in the other container, so I'm going to have to pause again. Okay, so I was able to go find the new replacement washers. And you can see by the speckling in there that it's a composite type of a washer. And I did notice that there was quite a bit of compression on the originals, or the ones that were in there. I also noticed that the little retaining washer that goes on the pinion gear 
it's also pretty uh, worn. So we're going to just go ahead and do that as part of the, the upgrade. We'll go put that uh, the little washer that goes between the gear sleeve and the main gear on first. We'll just come back here and clean the rest of that out. And you can see that there's been some dirt and, and the like in here that's pretty much gummed up the operation of this reel. Okay, well we can reinstall this now. We're going to use that real grease, light coating. You don't want to put a lot of grease on this, but you do need to get grease on that shaft so that it spins smoothly. And we can go ahead and put that main gear back on, or the gear sleeve rather. There we go, got that snap. Now we need the pin. Reset that. And that should just push in. Now when you push that pin in, make sure you clear the shoulders. If you don't clear the shoulders, that main gear is not going to go back on. We'll do the same thing here with the main gear that we did with the pinion gear. We're going to just check to make sure that all the teeth are lined up and that they're not uh, damaged in any way. And one of the reasons I like this reel so much is that the materials in this reel are fantastic. They really are durable and uh, I believe it's either for the most part brass or stainless. They're very well made pieces of parts and they last. The only issue I've ever found with these things that can't be corrected is that the side plate channel where the free spool lever rides will wear out over time. That's this little bar right here. You can kind of see it. There's a little hump on this bar here. And over prolonged use with this little valley which rides on both sides of that, that valley cuts into that bar and over time it starts to, to butterfly it to the point where this starts to slip off. In this case this reel is in good condition and uh, that's not a problem. While I have this in my hand we'll take the time to go ahead and oil that other bearing there. I'll put that to the side. Well you can do one more thing while we have that here. Let's get the oil behind the eccentric here so that the free spool release, con release continues to operate nicely. This is another area that becomes problematic with this reel if you're in salt water and you don't take the time to flush the reel at the end of it. That salt does uh, walk its way behind the screw here. It uh, evaporates on the stem and it makes this very difficult to turn. In this case, is not that's not the problem. All right, let's go ahead and put this back. We've cleaned all the channels and we've checked and inspected the teeth. Next thing up then is to put some grease on there. So much about real repair and, and real servicing is just about cleaning, inspecting, replacing broken parts, and uh, just uh, getting it back together again to go fishing. And most folks can do it if you have a little bit of mechanical aptitude, and that's why I do this channel, to show you how to do it yourself. All right, we just put the main gear on. We have the three new washers. You don't need to do anything with these washers because they're composites. They're not going to uh, benefit. They're not permeable, so they're not going to benefit from a grease. Um, greases want to keep the, the washers flexible. That's the primary use of a dry grease. And if, uh, if it's a composite or a hard one, Carbontex would be an example of that. Uh, this would be an example of that. You don't need to do anything because, well, they, they're going to remain rigid and that's fine. There's two different types of metal washers. The, the three drag washers are the same. You have two different diameters of these keyed washers. Keyed washers are the ones that kind of have a rectangle in between there. They lock onto the shaft. And then you have a single one in the middle here that's called an eared washer. And uh, as most six drag washer systems go, it'll be the keyed washers on the outside, the eared washer on the inside. The eared washer holds the main gear. The keyed washers hold the stem. And when you lock down, both the main gear and the stem are locked in place. And that's how you have full drag. When, uh, when you release a little bit, well, there's a slip between the main gear and the gear sleeve, and that's how you get your drag. All right, one of these, the thin washer goes next, thin keyed washer. And uh, we had some trouble getting these off, so you may have a little bit of trouble getting it on. Take your time, use your patience. Next up is the eared washer. That one locks in the main gear, goes on the, the cuts in the sleeve. Last drag washer goes on. Thick washer next. 
then the cap washer, and then the little sleeve referral or spacer. It's called a lot of different things. And there's a little bit of grease in that, so I just want to get that out before I put that back in. All right, we're on with that now, and it's kind of about that time to go do the reassembly. Well, the last thing we want to do before uh, start putting parts together is grab the yoke. It's called a yoke because it looks like a, a yoke on an oxen team, if you will. And you want to get the pinion gear. You want to get grease on both so that they slide easy. You don't need to over grease. Now we removed all the grease so it doesn't hurt to put a little bit more in there. If this reel was dirty, you certainly would be cleaning all of the grease uh, inside the case and like, but um, here it's not an issue. It's all clean. All right, we're going to take the springs. There's a little cavity on each side. This one's a little bit of a balancing act um, because that yoke floats there. The slot side of the pinion gear faces inward towards you because that's going to accept the notch on the spool. There's a spool shoulder here on the bottom. That's what's going to intersect with that pinion gear and that's what's going to allow you to turn the spool. And when it's pressed in in free spool, it comes off of this shoulder and rides up here on the sleeve. And when it's riding up here, it, it's not connected to the spool and uh, your spool can turn freely. All right, this is your jack. You want to press down on the yoke, and as I mentioned, this is a little bit of a balancing act, more so than, than some reels. You want to press down on that, like that, push it in. Then this slides over the top. And make sure that it's firmly attached. And then turn, turn your hand around so that you're holding it this way. All right. Most of the time what you can do with this one is you can put the whole assembly in without putting the dog in. You can go straight up and in just like that. Get most of it in, put the bottom spring, uh, put the bottom screw in, hold that from below, and then insert your anti-reverse dog once you've cleared the main gear. Just like that. I'm just going to do a visual. We'll turn it, turn it around. That'll lock up. There's some studs that lock in place. And we have all of those locked in place. So we can start with the screw that's going to hold the anti-reverse dog. Now you did see that little gear sleeve roll off the, uh, the shaft. Don't worry about it at this point. Just make sure that you can find it later. It's sitting right there those that were wondering what just rolled out. All right, we'll just tighten these down. Remember, we have a lock nut on that one, so don't, uh, don't forget that as you're going to reassemble. And also, uh, that's why the parts tray works so well. It's sitting in my parts tray, and when I'm thinking I'm done, I better not have any leftover parts. Although I did see a cute little comic. It said, uh, a good mechanic knows how to take things apart, and when he reassembles them, knows where to hide the ones that are left over. So there you go. All right. So we're in good condition here. This is where we want to put the spring in now. This is your anti-reverse dog. And you'll notice that the spring is kind of opposing. You have one that's squared and one that's bottom. doesn't matter what side goes there, but they do mount a little bit differently. I like to put the one on the top first because it's a little more difficult to reach. And then usually... Just uh, grabbing the tip with a needle nose pliers or something and wrapping it around uh, can get it done. It's kind of hard doing this for the camera and doing it myself here, but I'll try and get that done. I'm going to switch over. I'm going to use a little pick. I use this pick for everything. Sometimes it's a little easier. So I'm trying to show folks how to do it, I guess, and it. We'll just take our time again. You always want to take your time. Patience is key in, in your movie there. There you go. So we hooked it up the right way. Remember, we have that little nut. So I'm just going to start that by hand. 
So if you're like Alfred and you have a reel that needs to be repaired and you're not interested in doing it yourself, well I do, do repairs by mail and I would be happy to provide you real repair information if you contact me by the email on the business card that follows. The one part we couldn't get any grease on was the shoulders of the jack here and the reason why we couldn't do that was because uh, it wasn't set right and you were holding it down and everything. So go ahead and put that on now. It's a good time to test it. Make sure that that's moving in and out. You'll see that's how I was saying how it will come off the shoulder on the spool. When you pull it in, it removes itself from the shoulder. And we can turn this, make sure that everything's turning, make sure that the anti-reverse dog is working. We can come back and put our gear sleeve on. And now look at the difference here. Remember where we just had a basically just the blade left on that, uh, that drag stack? Now we've got um, much more, and that will be much more effective when we go to tighten it down. There were the two tension springs. These are not flat. These have a bend to them, or convex or concave. You can nest these to get the least amount of sensitivity, like that. You can face-to-face -face them. That'll give you a lot more drag uh, adjustability and sensibility. Or you can back-to-back -back them, kind of the same effect, right? You get that uh, piece. I like to face-to-face to -face them. That's the way I'll do it here. But if you find that uh, you have too much uh, play in your, your drag adjuster, go ahead and switch the orientation of that until you find one that you like. This one is always kind of tough to, to get it lined up properly. Just take your time. When you do this, you want to check, you want to make sure that it's going on square. What I mean by that is you need to have the same gap on top and bottom so that you're sure that you're not cross stripping this. I'm just going to grab the tip with my fingers here until I get enough that I can put the handle on to complete the, the tensioning. I use the handle as a wrench here to tighten that down. And you saw the little tension washer there, that rectangular piece. That comes up next. So if you were using that handle wrench, handle as a wrench, don't forget to come back and put this little tensioner washer on before you put the handle back. That's so that when you're backing off the drag, it doesn't lock into the handle. All right. Now see, I should have taken a picture here because I don't know which, which position Alfred had that on. And that's, uh, I'm gonna assume it's factory, which is the inside. You can get a leverage handle by moving it to the outside. It'll give you another uh, inch or so in the adjustability. Give you a more power handle kind of approach. Most folks use the inner, so we're going to set it to the inner. Now, if I didn't grease that shaft, you could have put oil in there. And if you're just doing a periodic maintenance, go ahead and put the oil in there. Just remove this screw. Again, if you don't have the Daiwa handle uh, wrench, don't worry about it. A pen wrench will work as well. All right, I just need to line that little scallop up with that hole. that and then we'll put the lock screw in put this on give it a test and hopefully uh, everything will be exactly as planned and uh, Alfred will be out there fishing again all right one more piece I want to do we weren't able to do it I want to put a little bit of grease onto the spool shaft and we can reload this You go. And again, you, since you can grab these screws with your fingers, go ahead and tighten as much down by hand as you can. And if you don't have the finger strength, don't worry. Go ahead and use the, the screwdriver. Best practices are doing exactly what Alfred did. He'll keep the reel clean in between use. Now, this reel was sent in without line. I get a question frequently. How, lo how long is line good for? Well, if you're using monofilament line, my recommendation is to change it annually. It's, got, uh, it's not expensive. And uh, monofilament breaks down with sunlight and UV rays, as well as it stretches from fighting fish. And uh, 
the elements. So I would recommend the annually on it. Folks ask about the braid, which is a little more expensive and um, maybe not as subjected to some of the issues with monofilament. And I, I, I'm always conservative. I said, you know, do you want to lose your trophy fish because you didn't change your line? Uh, but if you want to go a second year with that, that's okay. All right, beautiful reel doing what it should be doing. Look at this. You talk about casting a reel. Beautiful casting capabilities with those two ball bearings and the spool. One of my favorite reels, as I mentioned. The only noise I'm hearing now is it needs a little bit of oil there on the handle to free that up a little bit. There we go. So that's it. That's your Daiwa C-Line 50H. And that's how you take it apart and service it. In this case, we place the drags and uh, take care of that reel to last another, another long time. So I appreciate everybody watching. Please, everybody, stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.